Now let's take a look at the identification and management of respiratory distress and failure in children. There are four different causes that we will focus on, as well as what provokes each condition and how they should be treated. The first cause of respiratory distress or failure is an upper airway obstruction. This includes an obstruction in the nose, pharynx, or larynx. An obstruction in the upper airway can have multiple causes, such as aspiration of a foreign body into the lungs, swelling of the upper airway tissue, a tumor or abscess, croup, inflammation of the epiglottis, severe allergic reaction, known as anaphylaxis, or enlarged tonsils. The signs and symptoms of an upper airway obstruction are tachypnea, increased respiration and effort, inadequate chest rise, strider, a change in voice, crying or coughing, cyanosis, drooling, and an increased respiratory rate. To manage an obstruction in the upper airway, remove the object obstructing the airway, suction the mouth or nose, reduce airway swelling, and consider an advanced airway or surgery if needed. Two of the most common causes of upper airway obstruction are croup and anaphylaxis. When a patient presents symptoms for either of these two causes, PALS providers should be able to distinguish the right type of treatment that must be provided. Croup, which occurs most often in children, is an acute viral infection in the upper airway that blocks breathing and is exhibited by a barking cough, strider, and hoarseness. Treatment of croup can vary due to the severity of the disease and is often treated with home care, which means management ranges to include a single oral dose of dexamethasone, cool mist, administration of nebulized racemic epinephrine or L-epinephrine, endotracheal intubation, and heliox, helium oxygen mixture. Another cause to consider is anaphylaxis, which is a type 1 hypersensitivity allergic reaction, also known as an immediate reaction, that can cause intense bronchoconstriction in which the patient may stop breathing. To treat anaphylaxis, depending on how severe the problem is, an epinephrine through an auto-injector may be required. If there is a bronchospasm or wheezing, endotracheal intubation might be necessary an albuterol administration through an inhaler or by a nebulizer. For severe bronchospasm, give the nebulizer continuously. Administer diphenhydramine and an H2 blocker. A final treatment for anaphylaxis is to get methapernicillone or corticosteroids. To see more details about an anaphylactic reaction, refer to the corresponding graphic in this chapter. If the child is hypotension, do the following three things. One, put the child in the Trendelenburg position, flat on their back at an incline of 15 to 30 degrees with the feet elevated above the head. Give the child small boluses of epinephrine or an infusion of the titrated amount. And three, administer isotonic crystalloid. Now let's talk about the second condition that can lead to respiratory distress and failure in a child, which is a lower airway obstruction. This can be an obstruction in the lower trachea, bronchia, or bronchioles, and is caused by asthma or bronchiolitis. Signs and symptoms of an obstruction in the lower airway include tachypnea, coughing, wheezing, increased expiratory effort with a longer expiratory phase, and increased respiratory effort. Bronchiolitis is the inflammation of the bronchioles or the branches of the major airway passages in the lungs. Patients exhibiting coughing, shortness of breath, and wheezing. Management of bronchiolitis includes nasal or oral suctioning and ancillary testing like chest x-rays, arterial blood gas analysis, and viral studies. The other common cause of a lower airway obstruction, asthma, is a chronic inflammatory disease where the airway becomes narrow or swollen and makes breathing difficult. Symptoms including coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and tightness of the chest. There are different levels of severity of an asthma attack that require very specific procedures of intervention and assistance. 
To see the pathology and management of asthma in detail, please refer to the corresponding graphic and table in this chapter of the course. This concludes our second video on respiratory distress and failure in children. Please proceed to the next video to learn more.